commence. Button meshing has commenced. Button! What she said. I pushed the big red button. Oh, that's bad. Never push those buttons. So, oh well. picking up where we left off last time, the group had reached the top of the temple, had had two days to recover, slightly fortified, and then a message was received along with some extra supplies taken into the room and to be divvied up. Meanwhile, the Umbro Hoods were all taken to a room to get debriefed, possibly broken up for a plan for based upon the nice blood soaked cloaked individual you guys are defending if this location till individuals can arrive in like sometime probably two weeks or so and in the meantime in two days time there's an army of about a hundred undead which are probably headed for the beach and they don't stop at temple first, and your job is to either deal with them or draw them to the temple and destroy them or hold them off. So, yeah, hold off a dead with siege weapons and larger numbers for two weeks. Meanwhile, more can come from the crypt or destroy them and not get killed yourself. Choices, choices. But that's where you currently are. So meanwhile, in private chambers, why everybody else is thinking, what the hell? Surely the leader isn't that crazy. Oh, maybe it is. Okay. Well, whatever they're talking about. People are threatening the other room, thinking things over. How can they prepare two days? That's not enough time to fortify this. Also, if they have cannibals, there's no way this place is going to stand up. In a quieter, darker corner of the temple, uh, George, Chris, Estella, Seven, Little Buddy, and <laughs> and the leader in red all stand present as everybody steps into the wall or closes the door after they come walking in through normal means. <laughs> Normal is overrated, man. <laughs> yeah. The individual addresses a lot of you. So, I have you all, which I can assume I can trust in matters. And then I have the hired help and mercenaries outside, which I can only assume are either pissing their pants or wondering if they can run away. So, let's make this simple. We need a proper plan. We have proper equipment to handle this. Two ways we can handle this. We can break up into groups, assign out the assisted help, and possibly throw away soldiers to take the brunt of the blow while we survive and deal with matters and win, and small flanking groups to do guerrilla tactics, hit and run, and so forth, and try to flank the enemy and destroy a group that outnumbers us, what, five to one, six to one? Or we can formulate a secondary plan of fortifying the structure, drawing them to us, and hoping we aren't buried in rubble as they siege the place. Well. Yes, Stella? I do know that Sam might be planning something as well i would it be a possibility that we could get her input on on this as well she is a weaponsmith and she probably has some battle tactics as well seven's going to bark to that you want to bring the outside help in on this conversation well before we make a decision and utilize their skills ahead of time it's fair to go ahead and account what supplies and knowledge is present. I do not disagree. I merely wish to speak with those of similar ilk first. Any complaints or disagreements to what Estella has to say 
outside the fact that she's a newer agent and you may have a voice to disagree with her. Chris and George remain silent. Very well. Estella, if you would please use the door. Go get <laughs> Sam and any others you think might be a voice reason. Or we can otherwise move this into the major room and have everyone chattering. Oh, and bring the undead in here too. Tom, Sam. Can yeah. you come with us? Okay. Tom just looks surprised as he quickly starts stuffing stuff into his bag and gets up eagerly to head in your direction. That's the cool. rest of the group just sort of gives worried looks slash questionable whispers among themselves. Alam just sort of surveys the group as a whole unfazed by the situation. He's a watcher. That's what he does. Yeah, that I, after this I will have to talk to him. Sure, sure. Did you go through the wall? I did go through the wall. <clears throat> I go through the door. Tom uses the door. She's the ghost. Get her. Shut up, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say Moogle or Google? Google. The kitchen has a Google Home unit. Oh. oh, I thought you were telling me, Google. No. I thought you called him Moogle. I was like, what? <laughs> Wrong game. I know, that's Continue why I was questioning on. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Continue on, Lydia. Uh, I hate my electronics. <laughs> unplug it. They're always listening. Yeah, I know. That's a fact. That's actually been discovered and found out. It does actually, in fact, listen to everything you do. Well, Sam, I was hoping to get your opinion on the matter at hand, seeing as that there is a squadron coming towards us, and you <laughs> are very well versed in weaponsmithing. You also, my, I don't know your true age, but I'm sure you've seen plenty of battles before. Not the first time I've been at a battlefield. I honestly don't remember all of the last one. That was a long time ago. Uh, honestly, first thing we should do is get rid of the siege weaponry. Uh, as hey. far as actual tactics, them being undead means performing sneak attacks during the night is pretty much not an option. Undead don't sleep, they don't take rest, they're probably just going to keep marching. Setting traps in their path is a option. Um, if we can make sure they go into them. Also, we've got the equipment and tools to be able to prepare such traps. Honestly, the plan I've come up with thus far is take out or disable the catapults before they even get here. In the meantime, fortify this position and then essentially plan for siege warfare. And if push comes to shove, we bring down the building, or at least collapse part of it, while we evac through the tunnels and out to the coastline. And seal the passage behind us. We're required to hold this location and secure it. Well, can't take out the building then, even though it's not the most stable, but it's the best position we've got. Therefore, I would recommend first thing we're going to need to do is take out those catapults before they even get in range. Easily done. As the individual reaches down to the chest and picks up small metal cubes, looks like pieces of iron. This will work nicely, and if we have enough left over, we can thin down the troops. Honestly, I hadn't planned on using those because I wasn't sure what they did. But if they're a type of explosive weapon, that would do very nicely. I planned on burning them. It doesn't explode in the traditional sense, but it does make a cloud of smoke. Does anyone speak spider? Negative. Negative. 
I mean, <laughs> not the Bobs. Bobs no longer exist. <laughs> Real simple. They're what? They're all chemical items that I had requested. Wait. Uh, can little buddy can create webs and I would be useful for traps or helping fortify this position. I don't see how it would be very useful for going on the offensive. Well, that's mostly what I mean. If we strategically place certain webs, then we can one cover out the majority of the open holes. And two, there's a possibility of us setting up traps for them to walk into. We can also place maybe holy waters below the webs, and if they step on it, like the glass would break due to their weight, and then damage ensues. Alchemist fire would be better for setting up a landmine type, where they step on it and it explodes. Holy water I don't think will be quite as effective, although I've been proven wrong many times. But while one group takes out those catapults, the rest should be here fortifying. There's lots of holes in the walls of this building. We should see about filling as many of them as possible, using the web to help it make sure they hold. Any magics involved that can strengthen the structure probably should be used. I haven't gotten with all of the spellcasters here to find out what they know and can use. Spells I possess are not suitable for fixing a building. Tom, any input? I'm just happy to be a part of the conversation that you brought me in here. You are a spellcaster as well and have access to many spells that you have stated is not quote-unquote combat spells, but are quite utility. And that's what we're needing most now, I think, is utility. Uh, I can do detection. <laughs> and, like, levitate. And, oh, I can mend cut clothing. I can shed light. I can copy down stuff. I mentioned I was a researcher, and most of my tools and skills tend to apply to that. I mean, I, I do have a couple of, like, like a wand and several potions I make and keep with me, but I guess we could use those. I mean, it's limited, but... Levitate. That actually... If I remember correctly, when Levitate spell ends, does the subject float back down or does it simply fall? Bring it back. Allows you to move up or any creature or object up or down as you wish. Creatures must be willing to levitate. Objects must be untended or not possessed by a creature. You mentally direct it to move up or down as much as 20 feet around. Doing so as a move action. Can't move it horizontally, only down. Levitate creature that attacks or makes range is unstable and takes negative penalty depending and so forth um, so if it basically dissipates apparently it just drops because we could use a levitate levitate rocks push them over the troops and just let it fall on top of them So, congratulations. You have spells that are very useful. Yay. <laughs> Why did I say this guy was useful again? <laughs> if if anybody's... The, oh. I was going to say, now the question, Tom, is, since you've been here longer, what insights do you have about the undead that are roaming around, and probably, hopefully, you have some about those that are heading here. Um, thanks. Some of my notes got destroyed, but to my knowledge, 
Uh, they don't really tend to bother other undead as much, the mindless ones, unless directed by the more intelligent ones, which you can usually notice. Well, you'd have to be up close to notice that. Ah, I know. Uh, if they're well equipped, usually they're intelligent to some extent. Some of them are still pretty dumb, and those tend to be violent to anything that doesn't basically resemble themselves. And some of them are even capable of speech, and you can hold a conversation with, as I was doing while I was running away from some of them, when they were threatening to kill me, since I was an invader. So, more likely than not, uh, the larger groups tend to be led by intelligent and free-thinking undead, which kind of act out the same thing they did probably before death, which is march around and kill anything that doesn't belong. So, in other words, if we take out the leader, all that's left are idiots? Uh, less intelligent, violent undead that attack things that are alive, and then mindless undead, which pretty much follow out their last commands, which is kill anything that's not, not them, pretty much. Or just freely roam and will fight back if attacked. But yeah, uh, killing the leader thing would probably disorganize them, although there's a lot of them. Probably going to be in the back, and two of those tend to be pretty strong or magical, and yeah, all they have to do is say a word and the whole army will turn on you. I'm back. And I mentioned I have, like, potions and I can do other things. Such as... You didn't... If you're vague, we don't know what you can do. Well, um, I tend to find it useful to gather information from living creatures since they seem to collect old books. So occasionally I have to disguise myself, go into town and buy stuff. I also peddle my wares as a merchant. Uh, works well as a disguise. So I have a bunch of potions I make and sell, uh, mostly elixirs. Elixirs? Which tend to augment people. I don't have a lot of them left because I haven't had a chance to make some and I've had to use a few, but they can how augment can many, you. How many can you make per day? If I had proper equipment, which I don't, uh, one. Oh. Standard crafting. Yeah, it's like any magic item. You're kind of limited. One per day, unless it's more powerful than it, you might be limited to one for several days. Mostly lower level magic elixirs that they tend to sell well. But the question and is, affordable. what specifically do you have that can help us all survive this? Oh, um, that as the leader just watching and getting more and more annoyed with it. Because uh, the more vague you are, the more we're going to have to keep poking you and asking you questions. My apologies, I, I don't get to converse with people often. I mostly study dead things. Boss? So then, what, pray tell, do you have? I've got this endless wand of disrupt undead and true strike. I have an elixir of uh, electric eels and adamantine blood and but, 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 several yeah. of those. Endless wand of disrupt undead? Oh. Depends on your idea of endless, uh, twice per day. And one of the eternal wands. Yeah. Two uses per day, but it resets every day. It, virtually endless. Boss just sort of looks, so you're vaguely useful. And you're not hostile, so you don't need to be destroyed. And apparently this lot isn't dumb enough to have accidentally brought an enemy into our group. All right, you're talking about me, right? As Tom just points at himself. No, we're talking about the ghost that decided to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. No, I thought you were talking about killing me. That takes a load off. So yeah, um, I got these potions. Uh, also, I have some cure potions. I mostly just put it into my device and use it to basically spray it upon undead to destroy them. 
I guess I could use it on people to heal them too. Device. What, what is this device? Oh, um, he takes out like a little metal cartridge with a glass center, and he like pulls back on it with a plunger. It's like, yeah, um, it's basically a mister. You can load a potion into it, and then you press it forward, and it can basically create droplets and spray an individual. Does it have to use potions, or can it use, like, say, holy water? Hmm. I never really tried, but I'm not sure if it would honestly function under that terms. Oh, uh, let me... <laughs> yeah. You might want to check... I was because thinking that too. holy waters are much easier to get hold of, and they're cheaper, versus potions are much more expensive. So you're not being very cost efficient. Well, the guy I bought it from said it really only works with, like, potions and poisons. Nothing else really works. Uh, you can't really, like, load it up with elixirs or other items. Kind of a downside to it. That seems illogical. It only holds a single dose. Uh, it's really easy to use, though, and you know you don't have to worry about getting your arm chopped off trying to utilize it. Well, I don't have any poisons, although it really wouldn't be useful against dead people anyway, I imagine. But the potions are pretty good. Sam looks at the uh, blood-soaked one. Just tapping its feet, just staring at him. So, uh, back to the matter at hand, which we'll table that for now and keep an idea of what it may be able to be used as a backup healing mechanism. You said you had elixirs. What exactly do they do? Focus, please. Oh, um, well, the first one, because you take on kind of a slimy, uh, eel-like nature, uh, does thicken up your skin, and, oh, allows you to discharge electricity. Uh, once. The other one, um, makes you a little bit harder. You're staying damaged for a little while. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, that's it. Uh huh. And they can't be used with your device. No. And you can administer these to other individuals. Yeah. And you have a few of them. Uh huh. How many is a few? Uh, starts rummaging through his bag. Let's see. Nope. Broke. Broke. Still intact. Broke. Oh, usable. Um, I've got eight of the eel ones left, and oh, looks like only six of the adamantine bloods. And then, of course, my two wands, uh, my mister, and uh, 20 potions of minor healing. Minor healing as in cure minor? Uh, I think it's slightly stronger than that. It's the basic lowest level that isn't, um, you know, worthless. So cure light. If that's what holy people call it, sure. I honestly just call it pain. You, you, uh, okay. <laughs> I can't take I... it anymore. I can't fucking take it. What's the matter, Nick? You're just breaking up. Like, you can't stop laughing. This dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Nick's deep breaths, woman. Oh my god. (laughs) 
So you're well supplied at least. God only knows how you've made it across this place alive so far. Being undead might help. So anyway, back to the supplies we have and the actions we can take. We would need to get close enough to utilize the uh, cubes against the heavily armored soldiers and more importantly the catapults to bring them down. As for large numbers, I would probably refer you back to the javelins, which we only have five of. And to ensure survival and quick action, we have the spikes. But in limited numbers. Getting close to the catapults without getting dead is something I can arrange. Granted, it'll probably only be one individual. <laughs> it's getting out because from the info I've gotten, there are several undead mages covering the area. Who have a tendency to throw out magic missiles constantly. Well, then we just have to make the assault quick. If we can let them draw in closer and then rush them we could waylay them with the javelins and the cubes while lessening our damage and increasing our speed with the spikes um, and then go from there otherwise other tactics would be just thrown to us and hold up inside the structure well, there's well, with flanking, we can probably take down the armored ones a lot easier. Uh, though, I do think that the main priority would be taking down the mages. Next to the catapults. Hmm. Take out the range before getting in touch with the melee. Specifically the magic missiles, because even if we were behind cover, they'll still be able to hit. Something. I am well aware of what magic missile is capable of. Chris just shakes his head up and down rapidly. Oh yeah, yeah those things hurt. I so noticed. Well I think we've all had an experience with them. As for how what? much damage we can do to those guys, I'm not sure. But anything Thanks. we can do to whittle them down slowly before they even get here is good. This the issue is distance. Only you provoke them early, they'll cover a great deal of distance, and also you'll be out in the open if you try to engage them early. We want to send some of the other individuals in the room to do that. Sacrificing more to them to lessen the numbers would not be a bad idea. It's just getting them to be successful individuals that you're willing to throw away. What if I can make the arrangement so that it's successful and we lose no one and use the exact minimum number needed? Being one or two people. That would be useful. I'm not sure how the undead would respond, but it could be useful. I fully expect the undead to try to take out the threat. Which, if it draws them away from here and away from the inland, the landing parties, wouldn't that be even better? Because I don't know what our exact orders were other than hold this position and keep the undead from going to the beach. Nothing else needs to be known. So if we were to bait them off All away right, from the landing party and away from us, would that work? Okay. To where and how? Inland. Enough, but it probably I'm, won't I'll delay them for more the than a few hours, if that. Essentially, the, am the ones who will ambush the battalion that's inbound will simply draw them off inland and then lose the enemy 
assuming the waiver doesn't get involved. And those individuals would be stranded? Uh, if the Wavern's involved, stranded, yes. Otherwise, they'll simply evade all enemy contact and circle around to get back here. And may I inquire as to how this is possible? Meanwhile, George has been slowly stepping closer and closer to Tom and is almost at the point to where he can reach out and, like, poke him. <laughs> Uh, just finished up the project. Oh, okay. Uh, Lydia wasn't talking to us. <laughs> I heard Lydia talking. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Talking to somebody else in the room. Got it. Yeah. Sam um, just goes, well, let's yep. just say there's a druid here who's got a little bit of versatility. I'm hesitant to go into detail because I've been requested to keep their exact identity secret. Chris just sort of looks around. Seems slightly puzzled. George just reaches out and like pokes Tom in the arm and takes a step back. And looks past you through the hole in the wall. One of them out there is a druid? <laughs> And the individual just stands there, looks at the two of them, looks back at you. And the druid will accomplish all this mystery of getting out safe and back and accomplish this distraction. How? The exactly? druid can fly. Okay. And being shot out of the air or flying too high above the clouds and getting killed will serve what purpose? There are spells that can prevent magic missile from being effective. All it takes is those to be cast upon it. It goes out, drops the Kill. cubes or alchemist fire or the bomb I have planned and then leaves. The spell will absorb the magic missiles, and it will be unharmed. And the arrows? If they can reach that high, and that accurately, then the shield spell will still give them a good bonus of not being hurt. No plan is perfect. No plan is without risk. Hmm. But I don't know of a better option. And the druid would be okay with this fly out, bombard the enemy with limited accuracy, trying to hit them with the cube. I haven't heard the druid say no yet. Okay, Alan Seven, would the druid have a problem with this? That fence just gonna look over at you like you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> She's just very nonchalant at this point. This island's a living hell for a rogue. Chris will just look over and like, what about the dog? Dog has Never survived mind. everything on this island without much issue. Don't count it no. out. The spiders survived pretty well, too. Uh, yeah. It just looks at the spider uneasily. Have a problem with spiders. They get bigger in the underdog. Indeed they do. Never do a trade route there. It ends terribly. 
Yeah. Um, I don't really care for spiders and poison and such. Just say. Don't start nothing with the spider? I don't think we'll have a problem. He's pretty tame. And Sam will just pat little buddy on the head. Well, Commander, what do you think of the plans proposed thus far? I'm not saying we can't do multiple at once. That might work even better. Distract the enemy into looking two directions while they're being hit from multiple directions. Reduce their numbers as quickly as possible before they even get close. We had two primary options. Fortify the structure, stand here and hold it. Avoid as much damage as possible. Or B, meet an enemy out onto the open field and try to break through their defenses and whittle down the spellcasters and catapults. There are always worse options. We will use a scout, but we will not leave this druid out there alone, as the individual from underneath the hood stares down Sam. I'd planned on going with. We'll all depart from this structure, because it's not any good if it's destroyed. And we'll meet the enemy halfway. If your effects are effective then it should weaken the enemies and they will probably give chase or otherwise pursue. In case you need backup, we'll already be out there and we can then follow up the attack. I'll be honest, my biggest concern among the enemy is the Wavern and Wavern Rider in the back of the formation. We don't have anything for that, unless you plan on wasting the javelins on the big dead thing. Those are more used to pin down the truth once they are gathered up. I don't really have much that can take him out. Put a serious hurt on him, yes. Take him out quickly? No. We'll need some skilled archers for that. I believe we only have one archer. Well, he'll Oi! have to make the casters and <laughs> the wavern his primary targets. Then again, our range is short, lady. I am proficient with the short bow, and I have one. Have you hit anything with one, though? At a character? She hasn't used it at all, I don't think. Yep. But back in character. <laughs> How shall we distribute the supplies, and what do you wish done with the, the supplies I brought up that we found? Are any of them any of... Any interest to you and yours? Some assorted weapons and armors are what I found. Rather, we found on the beach. You may split them up with the help outside. As for George and Chris and myself, I doubt we'll have any need of them. Very well. Then... Once we have what we need, if anybody needs it, do you wish to leave it here or take it with us? It could be left here since there'll be stocking supplies. You never know. It may be useful. Not to mention it will only weigh us down to take us with us. True. 
and it sounds like we have at least the beginnings of a fully functional plan. Excellent. We'll spend one day to prepare, and then we will head out. Enemy will be a day away. We will pretty much make a half-day trek, and that way you'll only be a halfway from us, and will keep us further away from the cemetery and any enemies that may be brought forth should our actions draw attention. Yes, that alone could be troublesome. Very right, well. well then, I will contact the druid and start making preparations. Is Very there well. anything else you need me for, or shall I commence preparations immediately? You may excuse yourself and make preparations, along with Tom. Very well. Thank you for allowing me and my input. As Sam will give him a polite bow, and then head for the door and make sure Tom comes with her. He will step out. And then I will gently shut the door behind. And... I really don't think they like me, but I think, I'm, I think they think I'm helpful. Or useful, maybe. Tom useful? Yes, Tom. Like you, I don't think they do. Then again, it might be the whole undead in this place, and most things don't like undead. It's kind of like if a drow walked into an elven town. Oh, that would not go well. Exactly. You're an undead amongst the living, basically with a group tasked with hunting and killing undead. Well, then I guess I'm lucky that you haven't killed me yet. I will treat hostility with hostility. Peace with peace. Oh, I'm very unhostile. Excellent. Then I don't foresee us having problems. Well, excellent. Now then, of any of your things, do you have anything that makes one faster, enhances speed, or anything you I can do prepare not. within a short time? Um, bell, maybe. That's it. Which one and what's the duration? Short burst, usually used for riding away, although maybe you can use it riding toward people. Um, Expeditious retreat? With, yeah, that one. Useful at the start. Hmm. Well then, let's me get with some of the others and find out what they've got. And Michael, Sam's going to start talking to some of the others, find out if anybody's got acid, flask, alchemist fire, things like that. They will have basic supplies that they kind of picked up originally, minus whatever they've already used, which will be no more than like a handful of alchemist fire hats or acid flasks, in addition to maybe one or two healing potions. Pretty thin on supplies. They ran into heavy resistance in the opened area. And Doug is happy about that as he got to show himself off. Um, Aaron was a little hesitant because he almost got killed. And Heather says it was no big deal. The uh, guys with the robes and cloaks and daggers and all that handled most of it. It was pretty easy and boring. <laughs> Despite for the bickering of the sorcerer. Cloak and dagger works well. The bickering of the sorcerer. He bickers a lot. Fuss is about every little thing. Well, the reason I ask is because there's going to be a small raid conducted and then a major fight in the near future. So I'm planning on supplies and equipment for the raid, and then also what's going to be available for the major fight. And now I really don't like you, Sam, because that sounds like someone's going to die. It might be us. 
I don't plan on any of us dying. I plan on the enemy being dead. Uh-huh. She just sort of scoffs at that and walks over to take a look through the wall, concerned. Sounds like we're going outside the fortified structure out there to go fight them. That sounds suicidal. No, thank you. Well, considering they've got catapults staying in here doesn't really work. <sighs> of course, my plan is to take out the catapults first. And then if push comes to shove, we fall back to here and use the fortified structure. You know she tells the truth. You're still in the room. At which point, inside the room again, Leader will look at there too. And remark, George, Chris, if you'll excuse us for a moment. Remove yourself from my sight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love and how he had to be specific about it. Then they step out. Chris will close the door afterwards and just sort of walk off over here. George will just go down over to the fire. Oh dear. George. Come on. Quotes. George. Estella. Seven. Yes. So... At the point where Seven goes flying off and does the bombing raid with Sam, its owner, which wasn't in the original documents that it could fly. <laughs> I love how Estella all but revealed it anyway to the group, while Sam was doing her best to not be specific. Eh. Aside from putting one of my own in basically harm's way and maybe death's door, do you think what Sam said stands a chance, the two of you? I think it's a very strong possibility. There was... Excuse me. She has never let us down before, and she's gotten us out of too many sticky situations than I can count. The individual doesn't seem all there, but does seem to be knowledgeable. I don't doubt her intelligence. I doubt her ability to think things through fully. Yeah, I'm used to that with my crew, so that's what I'm usually there for. We obviously can't compromise the structure, and we can't run the risk of the cemetery getting involved and drawing you dead, because we would all die. The only option is to meet the enemy on the battlefield. Unfortunately, that will put us at a severe disadvantage if we go walking up to a large army like that. So definitely thinning their numbers and getting as close as possible to utilize the tools we have will definitely improve our chances of survival. If the druid, as the individual holds up fingers and makes air quotes, looking over at Seven. <laughs> Seven is doing the Say that again, Michael, I couldn't hear you over them laughing. <laughs> Basically, the individual holds up its hands, fern its cloak, and makes air quotes while looking at Seven, says, if the druid... Hey, Shake, did you the watch druid, the video of your new girlfriend? <laughs> Fuck you, man, get off. Uh, you're gonna... That's what you're going to do later when you watch that video. The okay. noises him and her make are pretty intimidating. Kazu. For streaming. Oh, well, in that case, I'm going to bring you the video right here. You ran. You do realize we're Kazu. gaming, dude. Even I'm a... Kazu. I'm, I'm bringing you... <laughs> I don't know gonna... copy link. There we go. Unless you want to be Killian. Get off. You're about to get off. Enjoy, everybody. Good night, Kazu. Goodbye. Well, that was left field. That is Kazu. A little surprise right, for our listeners. Back to <laughs> mainstream gaming. At which point the individual makes the remark, 
looks over and then looks back at Estella. So, with Matters SB, we have little choice, but unfortunately, to face them. If we can remove the catapults, survive the arrow fire, and get close enough to utilize the javelins and the rest of the stones. Did you, did you Deep breath. You okay, Lydia? I'm fine. Did you look? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Wait, no, that's a different one. Is it gone? No, it's not. <laughs> Burying time. At which point, we should be able to deal with the... Enough clicking. Lots of clicking. Okay. Then we should be able to handle matters. So, with the two of you being capable and the supplies we have, we should be able to mitigate the damage and get close enough to utilize the tools against their numbers. Enemies without weapons and armor should easily be brought down, not to mention the javelins should quickly cut through their ranks and allow us to get past the disabled catapults and then deal with the mages in quick fashion. If that undead is in fact useful and the healer can be kept alive long enough to be able to turn and keep our troops alive, we should be able to punch a hole through with minimum loss of probably one or two of the mercenaries. Seven's going to mumble in his own language, at least they'd be edible. Estella nods step out if they're dismissed. Very well. Here are your supplies. And I imagine the druid will be needing a few of these. Gives the druid, gives Estella five of the rust cubes to give to the druid. <laughs> and then hands Estella two blood spikes for her and her pet dog. <laughs> the co-owners. Seven and co. Uh, the thickeners be used for combat. It only lasts for an hour. And then one of the splatter. In addition to two of the tempos. So Michael, what's getting passed on to Sam slash seven? Seven is getting five rust cubes, one blood spike thickener, one tempo, and one splatter. Stella is getting one tempo and one thickener. Okay. Which you are to inject yourself before you engage in combat. Stella gives a tip of her hat. It's like, are we dismissed, sir? Yes. You can tell the other two to come in so I can give them their supply. All right. Thank you, sir. Which point you'll leave and little buddy will follow suit. Thank you, little buddy. Scratchy, scratchy. Then the anyway. other two will go in and be distributed their supplies. Oh. Um. Uh, blood um. spikes. And there. Um, 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 um. He will turn as he basically is watching Sam run around and talk with people and get an inventory of supplies. Turn, look at you. Yes, Estella Everty. Formalities are really annoying. Just call me Estella. And also, can I talk with you? Sure Not thing. Out in the open. Estella. Uh, Michael, can you do me a favor? Can you write down what Seven got in the loop, please? I couldn't catch it all. Okie dokie. 
<laughs> Sorry, between me and her, all we got was five rust cubes and um, the spikes. But I couldn't, I didn't have what spikes they were. I'm good, mm -hmm. I'm not that good. Excuse me. Okay, thank you. Doggo got three syringes of feel-good medicine and five rusty little cubes. <laughs> and Estella got oh two syringes of feel-good medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as for the, I guess as for the most part, I've been talking to Iris and Bill and Aaron <laughs> and trying to get Walter in, but I guess he's not interested. Walter's just like, leave me alone. Estella okay. is slowly plotting Ash's death once they get off the island. <laughs> Iris is happy to talk with you and ask if you're feeling all right. Make sure you're not sick. Yeah. Uh, if you need any healing, you look to be fine. Bill's happy you feel to chat with you, saying that you you carry a mean left punch. If you know that punch was a sword. <laughs> oh, I could create a sword if I want to. He just creates the the bat. The gold ambassador swords, like it's a very effective weapon against the undead, as you guys have. Very easily portable, like my spear. Sometimes I have to watch doorways so it doesn't get caught. It's not so much portable as more I could just create it out of my mind. I think. And so I can do it too. Hey, maybe so you can teach you how to. Are you related then, or maybe you taught together? Or uh, it's a long story. <laughs> oh. I wasn't aware you two knew each other prior. Very what? Close, no, 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 like, no, 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 not like that. If anything, it sounds more like an older sister to me. Oh, I um, guess that's good, although you seem to be bothered by that. <laughs> Bill, so pure. Aaron just like choking so over in the corner as he's trying to drink out his mug. <laughs> My God, they're all idiots. <laughs> Ash and, and Ash and Bill just look at him when if there's an animator, they both have a question mark popping up their head, like, huh? <clears throat> uh, sorry, it went down the wrong tube. <clears throat> <laughs> At which point, all I'm talking with Estelle, it's like, would you prefer to use one of the private rooms to the side? Yes, actually. Very well. Goes down to the one below. <laughs> I forgot to move. My AC was hard. Now who has all the pets? <laughs> I am the druid. Well, you know what? You know, I... now, now we know what you're making next. No. Actually, she probably would do a druid just so she could have all the fluffies. True. I know. Great, now we're. Great, then we have three, wait, it's going to be a party of three druids and two soul knives, wait. I'll be the only soul knife we left. That means yeah, I'd be druid. the only one who's not part of that group. Mm -hmm. Well, but... it's not another changeling. I think we have enough changelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we just need more changelings. Who's say? Maybe yeah. maybe all the NPCs are changelings. Oh my god. That would make so much sense. How is it? By the way, Ash, you're really going to change it all along. Wait, what? Kabu's just a hallucination. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my changeling! Watch. Whoosh. Turns to Estella. Huh? Turns into then it turns into seven. Then probably gets mauled by seven. Accurate. <laughs> there can only be one seven. No. No wait, if Ash and Seven wait, there's Ash wait, if Ash turns to seven and then Estella turns to seven, and then all three of them Stand next to stand together. Would that be a jack? Huh? Seven, seven, seven jackpot. Oh, oh. Nice. slots. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Honestly, a little disappointed I didn't pick up immediately. 
at which point, meanwhile, in the side room, back in game, Alam closes the door after everybody enters, just sort of watches the bug scurry in. A little bit of a puzzled look on his face. Interesting. You wanted to speak to me, Estella. Um, yes. Uh, it's mostly a great, matter of... Go figure. Sorry, I was distracted. They're empty if we remember correctly, right? Hmm? The, the crate. Out, out of game. Down on the coast, yes, but there's no crates in your room. He was like looking over at little buddy and remarked crates. Oh. She kind of like, yeah, like okay, I'm going to put a pin in that later. Um, the next thing is um, I, I know that our mission is with your employer. If you're worried about the contract, it can be completed at any time on the island. Although you're near the cemetery now, obviously it would be foolish to engage the enemies in the cemetery while a horde comes walking up from behind. It can wait, if that is your concern. That's not my concern. My concern is the mainly the whole. They would most likely get reinforcements if we did wind up going to the graveyard. My concern is if there's anything that you can help with us. I know you're supposed to be an observer, but there's a very, very high probability that the majority of these people might die. We will, we need all the help we can get, even if it means getting a few more hands dirty. Anything you can do, help us. Well, if it does help, the contract did include number 13 individuals, myself being one, to fill the slot. Intentional because all that was needed was ideally eight or nine, but considering the difficulties, expendable numbers were allowed. Better to have more than that you don't need than less when you do need. But I believe your concern is less on the number of individuals that live or die, but more on whether I'm going to lift a finger or not. Yes, actually. Fair I, enough. I understand. I am on the list, and I will be out there with all of you, as I doubt they'll allow me to remain behind. As my life will be threatened, I would obviously want to protect it. And you being dead will prevent the contract from being fulfilled. So, yes, I will dirty my hand. Thank In you all. In a matter of speaking. Since almost none of us know what you're capable of, I expect that you're pretty powerful. So, if you can aid us, that's fantastic. Thank you. I will try to be of use. She... Oh, I'm not sure what I can do against a catapult. <laughs> I... N honestly... The rogues don't know either. I would imagine... You just being a wisp, you probably have limitations in what you know. But I'm pretty sure the Wraith and Shadows have some inkling of an idea. They wouldn't just march to their own deaths. Oh, um, what? Uh, what? Huh? Umbral uh, Hood. Oh. Ranking system. I suppose they haven't had a chance to explain it to you as they still view you as an initiate. It's yeah. a simple tier system of five levels, followed by a leader. Most of the guilds follow them, and they tend to give nicknames to those rankings. Aside from Initiate okay, being a zero, the Umbral Hood call their lowest ranking Wisp. Next up, Shadow. And then above that, Wraith. And then, I forget the other ones. But what? needless to say, you have a decent ranking individual with probably a level head on its shoulders. Michael? Out of not concern, but questioning. Out of character, it's, yes. What? 
For a second there, I thought when he was dressing me as like a wisp was more of a, um, it's like, that's what you are as like changeling. It was just like, how does he know? Oh, that he probably already knows anyway. He was referring to basically your unofficial slash official title, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was your basically your, your position. Lowest rankings are basically just with little specks in the in the guild. And then next up are shadows. Okay, that's good. I was just wanted some clearing up. Which you probably are piecing the puzzle together now more in character of like, oh, so it was a position kind of thing and they got cute yeah. little names for them. Oh, 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 for a moment I thought he well, probably knows anyway, but yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, if, if everyone knows like the meme where that woman is just like standing there like analyzing things and there's like pie charts and then like the squiggles and the, the, the formulas and everything like that, that's exactly what's going on in Estelle's mind. <laughs> The puzzle's now whole. Was there anything else, Estella, or does Seven have something to say? Seven's just going to blink a couple times and then wag his tail. <laughs> Estella will, like, scratch him by the ear. No complaints, scratch behind then. the ear. Excellent. Was there anything else that you request of me? No. Very well, then we will excuse ourselves. He'll just walk to the door, open it, step out, and close it back most of the way. Seven's going to waddle over, and he's going to close it the rest of the way and then step back over to Estella and then take off his bracelet off. Why does he... And then swift action! Oh god. And poof, trap! And a... Oh, a trap? Girl a drow! Oh, drow. That's not what you said, Squeaky. Oh god. Well, I meant yeah. to say drow. It's Your traditional like guild appearance. Yeah, because yeah. the word that came out sounded like sounded trap. Like trap. Well, I mean, he can be a trap if you want him to be a trap. <laughs> I'd imagine you'd probably also remove the pearl from your mouth, too, considering that it's a magic item, counts as a face slot. If you yeah. shift back into animal form, it's going to go poofles with you, and you'll lose the talking with Sam mode. Yes, definitely going to do that. Blech. And draw it up. And then essentially, Seven is going to lean down and then shake his finger at Estella <laughs> and say, If you compromise my identity one more time, you will not leave this island. <laughs> <laughs> and little buddy just goes over to you and like puts two legs up on you. And then uh, little buddy is going to get a pet. <laughs> and it'll put its legs back down because you raised your voice so it came over. Everyone loves Little Buddy. <laughs> little Buddy's like, oh, you're talking to me? Oh, you're not talking to me. Oh, you're talking to me? Oh. <laughs> Estella will, like, back up and is just like, all right, all right. I do think it would be okay if the other guild members know. No. No one knows. Besides, I find it quite amusing that... When people meet me, they think, oh, why is a dog a part of the Umbral Hoods? It appears that George and Chris have no clue, but it does appear the guy in red does know, but isn't sharing with them. So apparently they're not high enough clearance, so... <laughs> or it doesn't if, care. Maybe it, seeks, maybe it thinks it's amusing that they don't know. If anything, she, she was mentioning it as like a pass at... Uh, she kind of had a hunch that Mr. Red knows. She's making a pass. I don't care if you think he has a hunch or not. If we do not know 100% that they know, then we do not tell them. Or Very say well. anything of the fact. Very well. Very well. 
Besides, the other two probably think I'm just a dog. And I enjoy getting my head scratches. That's what it comes down to. Well, I would scratch your head right now, but you're kind of too tall. Don't forget free food. And at that point, he's just going to swift action back into dog form and then put on all of his stuff. Re-equip gear <laughs> and pearl. Move action slide. Brace your back up arm and good to go. Scratches. And he shall wag his tail. <laughs> and the charade continues. <laughs> or is it facade? That's, that's a hole, right? This thing. This thing. That's a hole, right? Looks like a hole. Crack in the wall. So yeah, up there it is. And then a little one that you can see through there that they've mostly patched up. Uh, so one up north you can go through. But the That's one out exactly the back, what I wanted you to can't. Do. Just look through the wall. And little buddy will have to squeeze through with his legs, pull him in, and he climbs through. Pets, little buddy. You are my friend, little buddy. You are mine. Evan is going to growl at that. You are also my friend. No, I feel like little buddy is your emotional support animal, not your pet. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> can't take it on a plane, though. <laughs> Wait, you can take snakes on a plane, but you can't take spiders on a plane? What the fuck? Because of the whole snake thing that you can no longer take. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> it has to click. I'm sorry. I just love that. Wait, what? No. Oh. <laughs> And then fair. someone is going to go over because he was curious. To be fair, oh. I've never saw that movie until, like, much later. Oh, I've actually oh, never seen that. the movie either. Never seen Me either. I only know the line. Well, we need to have a watch party then, eh? <laughs> so at which point you guys will have a day to rest, prepare... Nothing else happens that evening other than some small talk. Ash. My planning. Mm, yes. I need to talk with you. <laughs> Out of character. Okay. I wonder how worried that makes him. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm coming. He acts. Oh my god, he's acting like Bill now. <laughs> oh my god. Don't you don't you fall for him now? No, uh, no. <laughs> she. More of like to the side. Over here, over here, over here. here, here. Thank you, thank you, little buddy, but not you. Not you, too, Seb. <laughs> hey, hey, Seb. Give some a, so a, give Seb a snack and then a pet. He shall eat his food happily. You kind of like has her hands like in a prayer position across her lips so you know when I said that Bid would be a good training partner did you get anything I said by that a, like a ligament of an idea <laughs> she has a blank expression on his face I was in wanted to Flirting with him. Flirting. Oh, is that the thing? Oh, are you trying to do like what Cobb wants me to do? Not. Face homing ensues. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? You cocks uh, block me, okay? You I... say like the last bit in under comment. Hold on, he's... Okay, this is a funny thing. Wait, you said that in under comment? Mm-hmm. Hang on, let me just check something quickly, because... Ash may not know what she said, but there's a chance Cobble might know. Oh, no. The insect knows more than, than Ash. <laughs> yeah, symbiote, symbiote.
trying to remember your languages. The meals can actually understand it. Yes, they actually understood. They actually he understood what you said. <laughs> oh no! But does Kabu bother to translate to the other one? I no, Kabu just sighs and says, "Let me handle it." <laughs> then he trips out. <laughs> then he flips out, and Kabu's under control. But he looks a little bit out of it. He even places a hand on his forehead. Ugh. Ash, why did you have to? Ugh, God damn you! <laughs> Look, it's the Thank sensible you. one. Oh my God! It's the one that has common sense. Seven, look! It's the one that has common sense! Unfortunately, <laughs> even, unfortunately, even in this form, that sense seems to be out the window. Ugh, it hurts being him right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm surprised that that mug hasn't broken any mirrors. Listen, whatever Ash fought when you were under that thing's mind control, it damages, it damages his head somehow. You don't can... say! I do say, and I feel like it did the same to you, and it did the same to the dog. She's just kind of like, bring, like, you know, like the sarcastic, like, you think kind of expression. At least your, at least your comment says isn't out the window. And I hope, and this dog's is probably still, well, it's a Listen dog. or spot check from Estelle and Ash. Listen check from Seven. Well, <laughs> listen or spot. Or sorry, that'd be from Kabu. Well, Kabu was using Ash's body, so let's see. Listen check you. Listen or spot for Estella and Ash, and then just a listen for Seven, whichever the two's better. Yeah, they're both equal for me, so I wanted to listen. That fucking monster. <sighs> What's going on? You don't Nothing, know. Nothing. Never mind. Uh, Stella doesn't really see anything as she's too busy staring at Ash to catch it out of the corner of her eye. And her talking's too loud so she's not hearing it. But despite Ash looking at Stella and getting scolded, or I should say Kabu being scolded as Ash, the whole conversation, <laughs> yeah. Kabu overhears with Ash's ears and Seven overhears with his ears stone grinding from behind them. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? Oh, God. You don't know and shit, girl. And as I know. Kabu uses Ash's eyes to turn and Seven turns around, there's no hole in the wall. There's a no hole in the wall? No. Look, the wall's fixed. Seven's going to growl at the wall. It still has her mind blade ready. Kabu also takes us takes a weapon out, but just stares at the wall. Hmm. This is really annoying. I finally experienced what you people call emotion. Uh, Even with your low wisdoms, you still know you walked through that wall <laughs> since it was just minutes ago. Seven's going to scratch on the door. No sound back. Uh, Chris will just look over at you since he's over on the rock pile, just sort of picking up small stones and dropping them. Just looks over at the dog. Walks over and opens the door for the dog. There you go. Don't know where your master is. And go walk back. At that point, I come walking up because it's like, don't know where your master is. And it's like, approaching. That's why he was just saying that out loud. Like, that's your problem. But fine, I'll do it. <laughs> he opens the door. You look inside the open door and... The back wall's also fixed. Mostly, it looks like. Still a little rough, but mostly repaired. The room is pretty solid. Adam? Seven's gonna take a five-foot step inside. A uh, pile of rubble over there. Mostly fixed wall to the south. The wall up toward the northern section. Looks like it's been piled up and packed it in a little bit. Not fully solid. The one up to the north, which you walk through, is basically the same consistency as the rest of the room. Seven's gonna turn around, exit the door, and just look at Sam and say, I just 
hopped through a hole in the wall, and now the hole's gone, Sam. I didn't fix it. Nobody's in here, and we were on the top side. Okay, maybe the building has a repair function? Where? I don't know. How is she going to explain the building put itself back together? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen things with a self-repair function. They're usually like items that just, with an imbued ability to just repair so that they don't just don't break. Granted, I think that was only two things I, ins I saw. This is a damn temple! I think one of them was cursed, too. I can't remember. Well, that's reassuring. <laughs> or uh, is it? Eh, um, don't know of a building having it, although it having been here long enough and the land cursed by deities, um, I guess it wouldn't be too surprising if it picked up a trick or two. Which also makes me wonder, if we put all the rubble in the holes, will it restore itself? Hmm. And at that point, Seven's just going to lightly paw at the floor and then lean down and lick it and then say thank you for helping itself. I'd also wonder if there was an elemental involved, but I haven't seen any trace of them, so I don't know. Uh, DM, she will call out in Terran, uh, saying, saying, I don't know who did it, but thank you for fixing the walls. Since, yes, I actually have Terran. Wait, I... It's You'll Sam, don't no question it. But you'll make gravelly, growly noises to what everybody else observes, but get no reply back. Uh, that's fine. She said her thanks. She didn't know if it was an Earth Elemental or not, but she's gonna say it anyway. And then gonna go find Doug. And Cobble goes back to a still over there at the fire, as you saw, basically, the boss come walk over to the fire, drop the pieces of paper into the embers, which is slowly burning, and Doug just stand there, and then the individual walks off, and Doug's just sitting there before the fire. Hey, Sam. Can I read what was on the papers while it's burning? The envelope, since the individual tore it up, envelope and all, into like six pieces. Pieces are just laying there, so the outside envelope's burning up first. Pieces could easily be recovered or stared at while they're burning in part. But the boss is just basically going over to the pile of rocks, and then as you guys are proceeding up, walking further away and going over to talk to George. I am going to retrieve that letter out of my own curiosity. Yeah, as Kavu just goes to Estelle, like, listen, while Ash is what you what you blatantly call a pain in the ass, right at the moment, you just need to cooperate with him for the time being until we could find some way to fix his mind. And everybody else agreed yeah, I am cooperating with him. Okay, so would, good. So we'd request him to not be a complete and utter fool, but whatever. It's just a personal preference. One could be saying, one could see the same about that one you call. The one who is called whom? Bill. He is sweet and precious and pure and too good for this world. I bid you a good day, sir. Day and Kabu out, and Ash is back in control. He, he like leaves the room and slams the door <laughs> before he leaves. Thank you, little buddy. Wait, wait, uh, wait, is there an. Oh no, I thought how are you leaving a room because there's no door here. There wasn't a door, but you wound up in the door room. There was no door room. We were here. There was no door. You yeah. can't slam a door that doesn't exist. <laughs> you. Never mind. I'll save that for later. There's <laughs> another pin. Ash just basically just gets freaked out and just checks. And still, still, Cobb wouldn't do anything bad to you, did he? Oh no, he completely and utterly, totally hurt me. I am in such pain and agony. No. 
He didn't <sighs> hurt me. <sighs> that's a good, that's a relief. Hi, little buddy. He gives little buddy a pat. Get a pet. And he'll take off across the room. It still just holds her head as she walks. And then Asher goes back, but like uh, and he goes back like, "Well, take care of yourself." I think. Sorry about the Bill problem. Yeah, it's totally Bill problem. <laughs> He goes back over here to talk with Iris. And then Ash out of stupidity. Hey, Bill, can you go and hang out with Estella for a little bit? I don't know why she wants to be with you. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know why she wants to be... Maybe she wants to talk to you about something? I don't know. Oh, oh. Sam's not involved in any of that shit, so... You're... It's, Lydia, you're welcome. Oh my god, it finally clicked. Sort of. Not really. Kind of. No. Maybe? No, not really. No, not at all. He <laughs> just <laughs> No, no, you're you're giving him just... too much credit. He's not he's doing just he's just being stupid he's just being stupid cupid right now, so appreciate it. Oh, she got something to ask me? Sure. I think so. Let's go talk to her. Uh, uh... you want to see me, Estella? You got Something to ask me? Uh, oh, do you need me to patrol or maybe help Doug with the wall? <laughs> uh, I did well with fighting with Ash. <laughs> I, she's, she's very puzzled at this moment. She's like looking at Ash and then looking at Bill, looking at Ash and then looking at Bill. Well, I, I I did actually try. He just yes. No. Go with that sword. No, 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 that, that's, that was fantastically done. I'm just surprised that something actually clicked in him. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe. Lydia, yes. mm -hmm. Random voice in your head. Don't look a give horse in the mouth. <laughs> look. I don't know what's going to happen with the battle and everything. Oh. Don't worry, I'll protect you. <laughs> oh, out oh, of oh, oh. <laughs> oh, character. He's the nice guy. He's a nice guy. Way too nice a guy. She's just. <sighs> what is with me and Eddie? And then she like, does he? Have, what does he wear actually? Does he actually have clothes? Well, what no, hope? He, he, he. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, but like type wise. <laughs> Unless you didn't write down a descriptive. I've got a full list of his equipment. Well, for the most part. I'll keep track with NPCs. Uh, <laughs> Rations. Bill has on him. His masterwork long spear, his masterwork scale mill, a long sword, a light crossbow, 40 bolts, so that's like four little quivers worth. And then he's got his little backpack, which probably holds most of the bolts, and then has some potions, holy wires, and our jinglies. And then, of course, his food and water. Jingles. And underneath that, he has all the vials and potions and coin jinglies well and then of course he has basic clothing which would be traveler's outfit so basically pants shirt and such underneath the armor she'll like grab the strap of like the uh the crossbow and then pull down to kiss him don't die and don't do anything stupid okay <laughs> gets a little word. Okay. And I can take care of myself. I need you to look after you. Most definitely. I will take very good care of all of myself for you. Because you told me to. 
Thank you. Uh, uh, anything else, or should I go back over to Ash? It's up to you. Okay. Pleasure talking with you, Miss Estella. And then he'll just sort of wander off slightly confused. <laughs> <laughs> She's being nice. It confuses him. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. And Bill just stop and look back for a moment and then look up at the wall. Oh, that's weird. And walk off. <laughs> well, I thought there was a hole over there. Uh, Ash, I've got an important question, uh, not Estella related. Yeah? Was there a hole in the wall over there a minute ago? As he points over there. I don't remember if there was one or Oh. I Maybe mean, I'm just seeing things. I was a little thrown off by recent things. <laughs> oh, really? Like what? <laughs> Apparently you don't protect women, they tell you to protect yourself. I mean, Not that's in these strong people, really. She fucking kissed him, too, and here goes the dents. That's why he's walking around slightly in a daze. He doesn't get it. You, you shocked the daylights out of him. <laughs> <sighs> C7, aren't you glad Sam isn't this dense? Yeah. And as he'll just go and sit down next to Ash and just be like putting a hand on his cheek like he doesn't know what to think. <laughs> it's Irish. Irish. To process. Yeah, Iris will just look at the both of them, just roll her eyes, and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I want nothing to do this. Or like, or like these two are idiots. Wow. A woman throws herself at you and just, wow. Just, that's all she's thinking. <laughs> At which point, the rest of the evening will go by. Doug will do his best to patch up parts of the wall in the room. Estella will try and help out with, like, some of the back rooms. Because she has nothing better to do. Considering individuals and such. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Space! <laughs> I saw that, Michael. Alright, would let me click on object side to move background. <laughs> it's annoying sometimes. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. You're you are the embodiment of that dog memes and stuff. I mean, Lydia. What dog meme? Yeah. Oh, that fine. dog meme. Everything oh, yeah, is that fine. One. After about three hours, you're able to patch up that wall. Doug will come out, look around, and be like, "Oh, someone fixed the other wall over there. Good job." Uh, I'm gonna rest, and he'll go plop himself down, enjoy a meal, and night will roll by. You guys will be able. If you're missing any damage, you go through another uh, thing of rations, I supply water. Yes, I'm Oh, when everybody goes to sleepy by seven would actually try to take the uh the envelope that he saved out and read it. Ooh, sneaky antics. I assume you have a light source which to read it by, or you're just going to try to squint at it in the dark? Squint at it in the dark. Wait, wouldn't Sam and Seven be on night watch together and nobody else asleep? Generally, yes. Then he would actually be over by the fire. Unless one of them's a light sleeper or doesn't sleep. You kind of have to be a heavy sleeper if you're on a ship. Not really. You just gotta get used to it. 
I've known guys who served on ships for a long time. The moment the engines cut off, they wake up. Because it was just one of those, the engine is a constant sound. It turns off. Why is the engine off? Something is wrong. And they just wake up. That's why I can't sleep without my air conditioner being on. If it's off, I can't. It's because the thing of, it's supposed to be on. Why is it not on? Something's wrong. Ding, 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 ding. All right. So you're over by the fire. Since you guys will be on watch near the fire, Iris will basically just be sleeping nearby. Everybody else will either be sleeping or somewhat on watch doing their own thing elsewhere. And you guys will have a light fire going inside the structure. Nothing too bright. Nothing to, to pull aggro. And you'll be able to take the six shredded pieces, one part a part of the corner and a little middle section slightly burned and sort of laid out, piece it together and try to read the letter. The information is in common, of all things. Nice and simple. And since Doggo is not Doggo and can actually read... <laughs> yes. You look over the letter, what bits you can get, you find lightly disturbing as the message basically entails that no backup or any individuals are coming to this location at all any plans in the future and that they've called up support and that you are to continue on with your secondary objective and head to one of the two designations and meet up with other individuals and to deal with any difficulties you come across. The plies that you have been given are to handle any town-based activities or interactions. Come across any large groups of enemies, you are to deal with them or send back notice of the incoming assault. If it is a great threat, you are to, as it lists, throw troops at it till it is resolved. That is the message. And at that point, he doesn't really... <clears throat> Actually, no. He's going to keep it in his pockets and essentially hold on to it instead of putting it in the fire. Okay, so you'll sneak off with your tidbits of paper, shift pocket, shift back, and all the betters. Yes. I assume Sam would have been looking over the shoulder and reading along. Uh, don't know what she was reading. I'm actually dealing with the other stuff uh, Seven was going to be giving to Sam, and that is two and a half sacks of flour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Squeaky knows exactly what I'm going to be doing with this. Actually, it would be the two and a half sacks of flour and the five pounds of potatoes. Potato famine. I tell you to hold on to potatoes. Okay, well, if you would only take three out for tomorrow's morning and for another ration. Fair enough. Morning will start to rise as people go through shifts and... I will need a save from Sven. What? Didn't Seven save just do who? two days in a row? I need a will save from Seven. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh, good luck! Oh no! I haven't looked yet. What was it? Oh. Not a good one? I don't know okay. if the bonus versus charm helps or not. 
Even if it did, it's still not high enough. Oh, Very close, um, but not high oh, enough. If it no. did apply. So, go to sleep time. Where would you have gone to put away your papers? In right the next there. room over here, just around the corner out of sight. Like right there. Wait, no, technically Iris would have been able to see that, so you would have been here. She's sleeping, but should she roll over and open her eyes, she would see an individual of unusual appearance. So, in Which is exactly room, why he'd go inside of the room. He doesn't like taking chances! But he will just be... Over here with Estella. Oh, he's over there with Estella? Wait, what? She's <laughs> <laughs> doing a whole lot of talking, so yeah. Lover's quarrel. Hey, now, 7-7 seven, seven are ha not having any problems. Alright. And let's see. One, two... Four, five, six. I will need you to roll me a D eight seven. A D eight seven. D eight. Oh. Oh, excellent. Uh, roll me a D four. Oh my god. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> roll me another D four. This is going to get beautiful real quick. Oh, no. Beautiful? Yeah. Uh, oh. We're basically counting how far Seven gets before Seven gets found out. And right now it's looking pretty darn bad. Oh, uh, oh, no. I need a move silently and a high check twice from you. I can't, whatever the roll is, I can't break it. Not really. Can you use it a hide? Yes. Hmm. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> okay, so let's see. You guys have that watch, so next watch. Listen, spot, fail from first guy. Listen, spot, fail for second guy on watch. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Next batch of hides. Anyone dying in their sleep? Natural 20. Spot check. Alrighty. Well, that is fun. Who's dying in their sleep? Uh, two people, apparently. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seven got ghostly possessed during hide and room, and she goes on a killing spree while everybody else is asleep. So two people are dead. What? And she disposes of the bodies. At which point what? the ghost will free Seven up. So this is what happens. First watch. Second watch rolls around. Huh. They don't notice someone's missing. Third watch rolls around. Oh, there's a the dog. Oh, he's heading outside. Mm, whatever. Acting weird. Hey, Seven. Se Bill's like, oh, well, I'm... I won't bother Sam with it. She's sleeping. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the did so gets the nat 20. <laughs> oh. Looked like he was dragging something. That's weird. <laughs> what? Oh, well. And then Seven will pop out of it. And this is the fun part. Seven, you pop out of it and... Why are you outside and what tastes like metal and why are your paws covered in blood? Oh my god, there's a corpse at your feet. Two of them. Who is it? It's dark outside, you can't quite see, but you definitely taste blood dripping from your mouth and your paws are wet. As oh no. you're you're over here. Oh no. You're you just... basically right around the corner of the front door and there's two shadowy figures on the ground before you. And your paws are wet. And you literally you ghosted get... two guys. <laughs> <laughs> basically hear the faint whisper of revenge. Ah, uh, Seven's actually not.
not going to make one of his smarky remarks this time and just act like he's oh spooky about it. <laughs> act like he's freaked out about it because he kind of is. <laughs> Oh, no! Wow, so it's a secret identity that Seven doesn't even know about it. <laughs> so, I'm so um, good, I'm killing motherfuckers in my sleep. Literally! Oh my god. What do you do, Seven? You're right outside the temple. Uh, there's the front door door looks like in the shadows to your left under the moonlight and heavy cloud cover there's two shadowy figures at your feet and you're right outside the broken wall you're pretty sure you're outside the front of the temple and there's two dead people and last time you checked skeletons don't bleed and that's definitely a taste of blood in your mouth your paws are wet so i have a question if seven swift actions into drow and then back into seven mode will that get rid of the blood Interesting, because it would be on your person, so the blood would carry over onto that person. Injuries still keep, so if you were wet, you'd still stay wet, so I would assume blood would stain since it's not equipment. So you'd still have blood splatters, because you know from basically if you got wet, jumped in water, switched out, switched back, you're not dry. The other okay, thing is, well dirty then, is still dirty. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a five foot step to where I know I'm standing on dirt, mm -hmm. and I'm going to roll around in the dirt in order to make the blood on seven not dry, but kind of caked, or not wet, but Muddy. caked and getting that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're going to basically kind of clump it up and then be able to like scrape it or at least cover it up? Yes, because he doesn't want to put paw prints, bloody paw prints, through the front <laughs> door! <laughs> Fair. So huh, after wonder... that's done, he is going to enter the fucking temple and go straight to Sam. <laughs> I knew I was gonna... <laughs> I was just like, hey, I'm gonna go straight to Sam, wake Sam up and say, I found some bodies, what's going on? <laughs> Gary part is, is there was players on those roll lists, and you almost hit one. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> just to let you know, how did that happen? Oh god, was Bill on the list? <laughs> yes, he was. Oh shit! <laughs> All and the then... people who went down there where the ghost was, was on that list. Oh fuck! <gasps> Seven's In addition to, to nearby NPCs, too. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's the sword ghost! Seven Butter. is going to whisper to Sam, I need you to put me one of those glowy sticks on my collar. Now. <laughs> I need the stick, man. It's a good thing that it, uh, it's a good thing it Sam will say to Seven is like, know. if I pop that in here, it's going to be bright enough somebody might notice and wake up. What's going then on? Then well, come with me and we'll do it outside. Oh, I can say it's a good okay. thing. It's a, it's a good, <laughs> Drowsily be get quiet. up, grab gear. <laughs> um, Who's on watch is... George seems to be awake over in his corner. Walter and Estella are on watch at this oh. point. Um, wisdom check from Seven and Sam. Uh, <laughs> wisdom check, you say, sir? Yes. I have oh. Ten. Okay. Um... Yay? No, I don't maybe. know. Um, you basically were woke up and everything, and you notice Iris isn't sitting on the bench. <gasps> oh, oh no! no. You Christ! Oh no! Oh, you fucked us! Oh no! Um, we're dead. Honestly, I don't think too much about it. Uh, she got but, to go to the bathroom or something. Maybe she yeah, moved during the night. I mean, it's entirely possible. People move around at night. Get t Especially in a ruined place like this, may get tired of sleeping on a damn rotted wooden bench and may move to a different spot. 
not uh, too concerned about it, honestly. So, um... And there's no way I'd be able to piece that together with what Sam Seven's freaking out about. This is what the room looks like currently. Just a heads up for everyone. <laughs> oh, God! So I see Estella, Walter, Ash, Doug, Chris John. Mm -hmm. Okay. We people might be on patrol. Up. People might be in other rooms. Don't think twice about it, really. Have no reason to think anything of it. Well, I mean, Bill and Iris are in that room with Tom and the other guy, so... Heather and Doug were on the watch after yours, and current watch is Walter and Estella. Chris was awake for the second watch, and George is awake for the third watch. So right now you have three people up, in addition to you slightly being half awake and seven being up and about and a little tired. Well, the people who are on watch after me, they could have, there's no telling where they went to sleep, so I have no idea where Doug they went. Seems to be sleeping back where he was. Heather may have taken a room or something. She may have gotten Not tired sure. of dealing with people and moved away. Possibly. It seems on par with her personality thus far. So, Seven, do you wonder which one of the mystery people you killed? I kind of want to know, but at the same time, I would like to have the torch over here. I will go out if anybody says anything. Just say... Kind George of. will just look at you and just put his head back down as he's just sort of keeping watch in the general vicinity, keeping an ear out. Like, oh, you're heading out the front door. Okay, I'll go to the bathroom. Fine. Seven's going to whisper If to anybody Sam, asks, it's actually what Sam would have told him. You use the door to go outside. Meh. Wouldn't be the first person to use the door to go outside tonight. It, yeah. So you'll go over there. You're in the dark. You see some, two figures on the ground right there. You go walking up and your feet get a little wet. Uh, gonna pop yeah. dancing lights since it's a very dim light. Oh, and I'll pop it as a little fly of five orbs because each orb only gives off a very small amount of light. <gasps> they also don't last very long, so if there's anything else out there, it doesn't light the whole place up. And if need be, I can stuff them in a bag. <laughs> it's like, all right, get in the bag, and lights out. That might be an alignment ship for you then. What? Putting the dancing lights in a bag? No, not the dancing lights, but... Never mind. <laughs> I'm talking about and the lights. For... To relieve some pressure before we do a reveal, door opens up from over there, Bill comes walking out, and goes <laughs> and sets down by the fire and goes to sleep. Okay. Because Estella was... Lydia was about ready to start killing people if Bill died. Uh, two of those rolls, he was one off from getting killed in either case. <laughs> oh, he was number three on the D4? I hope I didn't make I hope I made it. Your uh, player is uh, to get missed, although uh, Sam was awfully close as one of the players who near got killed. Oh. That would have broke oh Seven's God. mind. Yeah. She would have, he would have run in like, Sam, and then see Sam? Sam? Where's Sam? So Sam is not where I left it. Her. Alam. Um, Tom. And then we have Aaron. So your kill count consists of Heather and Iris, two women. You killed the women. <laughs> I killed the healer. He killed the healer. God damn it. <laughs> Why couldn't it have been Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Being Iris were very high due to proximity and also a religious individual. So it didn't really take much for her to be on the hit list. Heather was a little bit of a surprise, but one point off other direction would have been Doug or Sam. 
and on the other role, it would have been Bill or Aaron. A really crappy on the far end of the spectrum would have basically put Ash on the dead list. <laughs> so <sighs> that's pretty much how that played out. So instead of you getting one person, you managed to get two. Oh, oh yeah, uh, let's there's... just be honest. Seven's that good. <laughs> who who among us doubted Seven was good enough to assassinate people? Oh, Seven, you were saying about dead bot about eating dead bot. Oh, so, yeah, be like... you basically see Iris with her her eyes closed and throat ripped out, and Heather with her eyes open and throat crushed, and then basically her arms basically shredded. Looks like she pretty much bled out. And But I can tell both are confirmed dead. Well, you check Iris. He'll check. Take your time. And there's no pulse. And considering the blood from her throat covering her body, I, I don't think you can fix that. On Heather? And no. the other has her eyes wide open and her throat's crushed. And there's a lot of blood coming from her wrist. Yeah, you're getting no response from the eyes. They're both dead. And Seven looks awfully worried. Or maybe happy, who knows. <laughs> no, because Iris is very helpful, so Seven wouldn't be happy on that one. So I'll, talk, so I'll tag worried. Heather, neither of worried us Worried on knew. Iris, food for Heather. <laughs> Jeez. Well? Well, <laughs> it sounds just like uh, shit, this is a problem. Um, looks at seven. You didn't see who did it, did you? I'll need a will save for Sam. Oh, motherfucker. Uh, oh, question. No. Does this count from an undead source? Yes. Okay. Then I will apply the from undead source unless you're selling, unless I can't activate an use an immediate action from an item to resist it. You'll feel Wait. the effect, so yes, you would be able to as a immediate action. Wait, that, yeah. that was a will save, not a wisdom. Will save. It was a wisdom check to realize other things. Uh, since I have not completed my full rest, Michael, and since I did not use it the other day, I will also apply my racial. Because I don't know what the fuck this is, but fuck you. Oh god, it's a good thing I did. That's an 18 total. Otherwise, you would have been hosed. Um, if I hadn't have done both, I would have had a total of 11. Yeah. You, you'd you probably be drawing your sword and trying to kill 7. Yeah. Again. <laughs> like I said, I don't know what this thing is, but fuck it. 7 will see like a shadowy figure over Sam's shoulder and then it fade away. Fucking shadows, man. You'll just get like a little like chill up your back for a moment, Sam, and then you'll be fine. Except for the fact that you're standing over two dead bodies and, oh, your shoes got blood on them. Oh, great. There's an army of zombies. We need every man and we already lost two women. And we're two people down. On the plus side, the ghost loves killing women, apparently. That's not a good thing. <laughs> Sam is female. <laughs> Well, you know who's next then? Estella and Sam. He may not, she's probably the least endowed person of the entire group. She's still female. <laughs> <laughs> At least Estella can change how womenly she wants to be. Estella's almost always chosen a feminine form. The only time that she does do a male one is when it's fuck around with No, someone. I mean, you, you, you could be slender, you could be curvy, oh, you yeah. could be extra thick. Yeah. So... What with the two outside? Because you got good people. <laughs> Sam's literally like, uh, this is bad. You didn't, and looks, and literally, that's the, she'll go back to the question of, she was asking Seven when something tried to screw with her. Okay, you didn't see what did it, did you? I woke up covered in blood. Did you see, she looks, he looks rather muddy around the mouth and legs. And there was just a shadow above your shoulder just now, so... Great, great. Uh, DM, I pull out the... 
um, Everlast the Continuous Water Skin, and Brush, Clean Up Seven's Mouth. I'll leave the paws messy, put that away, and go back in. And go back in through the door, because I Lights don't know. Following. Do I know uh, Bloody is over here? Hmm. Know that the individual basically walked was over here originally and walked to here, 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 and then went in that way. As for if still there after or while you were sleeping, don't know, but you could walk in and shed some light and see. I don't want to get stabbed, so no. <laughs> uh, waking up someone of that caliber while they're sleeping is a good way to get shanked. Uh, okay, so gonna go back inside. And was it George or Chris who was somewhat awake? George. Which thankfully Seven didn't kill any of her the team. I know. <laughs> I'm moving up by killing people above me. <laughs> Move over to George and poke him quietly saying, hey. He'll basically reach over and he'll just look up. Yes. We got a problem. I'm dead. Where's the boss? Probably in the next room resting. I got two bodies outside. George will stand up, dust himself off, stretch his legs, look about the room. Uh huh. There's a few. Well, four people, not including the boss. Missing if you want to count the undead thing as a person. Assume your dog's still outside, so yeah. Seven's keeping the watch at the cleric, moment. Cleric. Yep. The angry girl. Yep. That tall, weird, bald guy, and the boss. And then the dead thing. First two you listed. We have a problem. Okay. I didn't do it. Chris didn't do it. Ella didn't do it. Boss did. I don't want to know. I don't if think you, the boss if would you have guys did messy. it, then you're going to have a problem. Why is the cleric dead? I have no idea. And the rather busty rogue. Was she a rogue? She had knives. I assume she was rogue. Uh, but, um. Yeah. A decent body. I don't, don't she know who, body. and I don't know how. Uh huh. And I'm curious as to how that who, who or whatever did it, did it without anybody noticing, and then got the bodies out. Now Chris is on watch, and he's not the most observant. And then your people were on watch. So, yeah really melt, makes me doubt security. Just goes over to Chris. Hey, Chris. Chris, wake up. Wake up. What? We got dead people. Oh, get the holy wire. No, not those dead people. Like, the cleric's dead. You gotta be shitting me. No, no, no. She's with her god now. Estella's on watch. Right. Like, oh, crap. Uh, go get the other one. Okay. George will walk up to you. Uh, did you happen to see anything, Estella? Uh, Walter? Walter just looks puzzled. Are you people talking at the door and walking around? No. She would say an undercommon. What's going on? He just looks at you. <laughs> uh, room look a little empty to you by chance? <laughs> Well, the cleric's dead, and so is the other girl. Someone killed him in their sleep. That's grand. Walter's like, 
Oh, the good looking one's dead? Why do they always die first? Your ass snoring on this <laughs> on the bench. Is someone kind of just looks at him? Really? Fine, one of the good looking ones I see as, <laughs> as he looks away. You see an ass starts a little bit and then stirs. This point noises are rising and people are starting to wake up. All except for Aaron outside. who's dead asleep. He looks that around. Means we don't have anything to rebuke them. He wakes up and looks around like, "Hey, what's going on? Are we under attack?" No, we're not under attack. We're just no. short two people. Everything's fine, dude. Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep, Ash. I'm confused. He's, wait, wait. Just, just, wait. just go back to sleep. Go back. I'm, go back to I'm sleep. I'm confused now. He looks. Go over back to sleep. Asshole. He goes over to Walter. What happened? <laughs> Walter Problem. tells him to go back to sleep. <laughs> problems. Women problems. Lack thereof. But the cell is right over there. <laughs> <sighs> Congratulations, you're not blind. <laughs> <laughs> Walter's just staring at you. I don't think it'll click with him. Uh-huh. He just looks at everyone always walking around awake, except for Aaron, and doesn't see... Wait, wait, where's Iris and... What he the... eats. <laughs> <laughs> wait, where's Iris and the other girl? And Alam, and Tom, and the cloaked figure. Uh, George just looks at you. About that. And where's... We could use that druid right about now. <laughs> Sam's outside. It's probably... So I don't know who George is talking to. Talking to Stella. She holds up her hands. Uh, the druids, they're always going out doing weird things. I don't know. I don't have a personal tracker on them. So Sam's a druid? Uh, I don't think druids use. I don't think druids use most heavy sword. Again, I don't know what's going on. Uh huh. We need to solve this to the best that we can right now. Michael, um checking their gear, seeing if any of it was taken or if I can tell if anything was removed. Their gear was not removed, no weapons drawn, and nothing taken off their bodies. Apparently seven, in quotes, took, <laughs> did the job swiftly enough that they really didn't get a chance to, to react. Okay. Then I'm going to start collecting their gear and placing it to the side on a dry spot. Because that way, whatever we do with the bodies, at least the gear is separate and survivable. Sam has no concept of, like, CSI or anything like that. It's just like, okay? Hey, on the bright side, I probably can get to her armor. Clearly! <laughs> Add a stab or two so it doesn't look like their throats were bitten <laughs> out. You can't. Here's the thing That's Sam mis- doesn't think about the fact that you did it. She's just like ripped out, crushed. Then um, Seven's going to state that. Can you stab them while they're not uh, looking? The alive ones? I don't want to get known for crushing their uh, throats. That's Actually, with the it's like, can you stab them while they're not looking? I don't want to. And then Sam's like, oh. Yeah, I guess we probably should take off the head so that way they don't get back up as undead. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Her mind's like, hey, don't you think you should, you know? And it's just like, oh. Yeah, you're kind of right. Maybe I should. Her mind doesn't even go to think about the fact of covering it up. It's just like, prevent them from getting up as undead is the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, well, then at that point, <laughs> as soon as Sam takes off their heads... Which, seven, I have an axe for that! 
actually going to say, just, just leave me the bodies. Well, like, actually. I will cut them up into pieces and serve them to the rest of the party. <laughs> what the hell? That's Sam's just so gonna stop and think about this. Like, no, people aren't food. We're not that desperate for food. No, thank people aren't you. Food. Did you want to read the letter, Sam, that I got from the fire last night? Uh, something that he wasn't happy about. Um, yes, we've been sent here to die. Uh, we're still not desperate enough to the point we need to eat people. Well, then I shall eat people. Why? I thought you weren't hungry. Seven just proceeded to eat the body. And Chow's down on Heather. <laughs> oh, I don't know why. He should, he should be fine. It's not like, oh, well, unless, the, you know, the shape-shifting stuff takes a little bit out of him. I don't know. <laughs> Sam's trying to figure out, I was like, why is Seven hungry again? I don't know. Well, one thing I can say for you, um, Nix, is you were concerned about Estella or Iris keeping the gear. You really don't have to worry about that now after those rolls. <laughs> uh, God damn it, but now we lost the fucking healer. Oh my god. I didn't expect to do it this soon, though, Michael. Congratulations, you are that good, apparently. Oh. Alright, so I will collect the gear off of both individuals. I'm telling it up now because Iris had a whole lot of crap you guys gave I know, her. we geared her up. We geared the healer up. That's what you're supposed to do. And that was the worst thought. It's like, I hope the ghost doesn't kill the cleric because, I mean, that would be the most obvious choice because it hates holy people seen as what they did to him and also it's going to be the closest one to the fire Wait. and it's like crap why uh think about it He's buried in this tomb by by holy people and everything imprisoned and such the only thing i can say is the fact the deity might be obviously different and being of paler would probably be the one available to lay him to rest if he cared about that Alrighty, and copy her gear, and paste, full list of Uh, because Michael, I will admit there are some things Sam's probably going to bag up, because that's stuff that's technically um, hers or one of the other party members. Estella has the bag of holding, unless you have one too. I've had one for like several levels. <laughs> uh, that was unfortunate. Well, oops. Is it time for me to be makeshift healer again? Uh, hold on. I'm having to sort through the list of oh, shit. No, I was kind of hoping it was either going to be Walter, Doug, or maybe Bill, as horrible as that is, because then the healer wouldn't be dead. No matter what, we wanted the healer to live. Damn it, Squeaky. I, I'm sorry. I just I mean, made some rolls. It was the most obvious like, choice. I would be sad if Bill died. I really would, but... Tactic-wise... Up. The I Iris the was the one we needed to lose for the NPCs. Like, Iris is, yeah, Iris was the one we needed. Thanks, Lady, for most. praying for Bill to live. Well, this is what happens when you pray. Hey, <laughs> Sam prays. This shit doesn't happen when she does it. <laughs> yeah, but this happens with Lady of Prey. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> uh, well, well, the I didn't master work holy exactly this luck to happen. So lucky, lucky. Wasn't Iris's? Oh no, she had chain. Yeah, no, she actually had straight chain mail. She didn't have. She oh didn't wait a minute. Does this mean that the spirit's now going to try to possess 
seven because when he possessed Sam, nothing happened. And then when he actually possessed seven, he got two kills. Oh, no. <laughs> you're realizing things. You're going, oh, fuck, Nets, aren't you? What have we learned? Go suck. Go suck. <laughs> Take things from the temple's catacombs. Hey, now. Seven retrieved it because Sam wanted it. Well, I couldn't take it, so it's like, all right, it's stock. Why is it stock? Find out why. Found out why, and then it was just like, okay, so it's this, this, and this. So this could be an issue. Rip. <laughs> to be fair, huh. all Seven had to hear was "God of Death." That was a speculation on the party side. That doesn't change. The Uh, I'm retrieving the holy water sprinkler for me. It's already preloaded too. That's the eight yeah, charges. Sam's the one who paid for that. Smart woman. Oh, healer's kid. Man, that's some good shit. What's left? You guys gave it to her. I am well aware. <laughs> Fuck nits. God damn it. Uh, what's the rest of the anybody else doing while Sam's doing all this? Uh, Stella's kind of worried and it's just like. Ash is basically gonna go. It's still looking for answers, Ash so he don't... goes. He's gonna go talk to Chris because he goes by the door and asks him. What's going on? Stella's gonna step outside. I'm also Do a good. little math, my Hey, friend. Charlie, where's the... Or, uh, Michael, where's the schema? Oh, there it is. Never mind. I'm blind. Oh, I mean, my... Count people. the people in the room. And uh, figure out just... if people are panicking, who's dead. Also, tagging the schema, Michael, He's because like, Sam no. paid for that as well. Iris, Heather, no! They were great people! Who would do such a... Uh, Heather was Sam? nice looking, but her personality sucked. Iris wasn't so bad. Oh, God. Uh, As you see, a... Heather's hands shredded and her arteries opened up on her wrist and her throat crushed with heavy bruising, puddles of blood around her, and Iris's throat completely torn out and blood sprayed all over her body. Not the... uh, one thing I will note, both of their heads have been removed. And, oh, their heads are now separated from their body, too, cleanly by a blade. Though it looks more brutal for the other injuries. He just looks at them, and then he just looks at everyone and says, Zombies don't have assassins. Oh my god. Chris just looks at you. Good, well played with the low wisdom. Nice adventure. <laughs> Chris just looks at you like, he just shrugs and just sort of Sam. smiles at you. Huh. Do you think that whatever we took from that thing did this? I don't know what did this. Not a clue. I'm going to make a wisdom check. <laughs> Just with, like, sailor superstition type of dealio. And all Kabul would say to Ash, what a pity. They were weak. They couldn't even produce an offspring. Oh well, that's light. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Estella. Wow. Lydia. I need you to roll percentiles. That was a wisdom save. Oh, percentiles? Percentiles. Percent. Oh no. Better roll high. Shut up. All good. Oh, good. Oh, that's right, because you went outside behind Sam and... <laughs> uh, Michael, I'm modifying the list you've got that you posted, because... Um, easier to read. <laughs> one, make it easier to read. Two, consolidate, because all the antitoxins were all out of guild drop. Because all the stuff listed that Heather had... The holy water, acid, antitoxin, those were all stuff we were given anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Estella. So I'm uh, just combining the list, and then I'll post the update. Just responds with, "Well, good thing that you cut off their head to prevent them from coming back." Um, I still don't trust whatever you guys looted from down there. And I'm going back inside and going to try and forget tonight. Thank you! Oh, Seven, open up. She holds out her flask. He's going to, like, stop eating on Heather's body for a second to just hold open his <laughs> ball. He just looks at Seven like, No, Seven, don't eat people. Bad dog! Estelle's like, it's one way to get rid of bodies, so I'm not complaining. She'll pour some uh, into Seven's mouth, and then just walk out. Walk back in, I guess. And he'll gulp it down and continue eating. Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go and check on the others. He's gonna go <laughs> up patrol. Hey, Michael, were the two potions that Heather had, were those guild drop or hers? Those were hers. Okay. He goes into the other. He goes to check on this room. Then he goes check on everyone. See these dogs. He's Aaron. He gonna start dusting the floors or something? No, he's just checking out everyone. CSI is not something we currently have available. He I checks mean, up on. Kind of a good thing. He checks up on Bill. And Sam doesn't even think about the doing the CSI shit. She's just like, yeah. Bill, you okay? Yeah. What? We got problems. Alright, there's the updated list of what, if people go through it, people will find. Okay, I'll delete the old one. Because Sam did grab uh, her stuff. Since it was stuff problems. she'd given to Heather. I just love that like little, little tidbit. What? We got problems. Uh, oh, we're, Sam just said we got bodies? Dang it. I was hoping for better equipment for the people are, Two people, two of our people are dead, Bill. They're dead. Uh, Lydia, what? Estella should probably Ooh, go for why? the short sword. Heather and Iris, their heads have been, their heads have been cut off. Whoever did is an, is an expert assassin <laughs> right outside. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, low wisdom. Let's so, see, where oh. where are you at for this? Because I'm curious. Oh, you're way over there. Yeah, there's no way in hell Sam will hear it. Managed to drag their bodies outside to leave a marker and severed their heads after brutally crushing them and none of one saw a thing. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, we're doomed. Who, anyone could be next. <laughs> oh, somebody slap some sense into that fool. Except I'm not there, so I can't say shit. Wait, Both wait. Of them. How close... Question. I'm over there next to Bill, next to the fire. Bill's just like, oh my god. Not, not Iris. She was Ver, nice all the to far. people. She saved my life. She saved my life too. Oh my god. We're all the, we're I don't too really far know away. Heather. Yeah, she didn't do... She liked me for some reason. Then she didn't. Then she did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dense motherfucker. You know it. I'm a dense motherfucker. You know it. You're an idiot. <laughs> I'm a dense motherfucker. We know it. You're an idiot. That's what I was saying. <laughs> this is what happens. You have a wisdom modifier oh of negative two. You know, it's still just watching these two interact, but can't hear a damn thing. So seventh eating Heather. Uh, Sam's packing up the gear and. You're basically watching those two like, oh my god, she was so nice, she did this. Remember when we first got here and we did the dead and I got attacked and just reminiscing over the dead. Doug's just sleeping through the whole thing. Aaron just setting up against the boulders, resting, meditating. I just had to, I had to play that level with them. Sorry, you had to. I know, no, it was beautiful. <laughs> it, it's amazing. It, it was beautiful. It's like I'm not saying shit. I know, Lydia's the one who's getting triggered by it. Constantly. Yeah. It's because I've dealt with actual people like that, and it's very irritating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, worry, they're called alarmists. Keep... Until he gets his wisdom back, this is what he had to deal with. I know, George. and you're going to have to deal with me. George just walks over to you, Estella, and sort of like looks at the spire near you, looks at the rest of the group, and whispers over to you. 
you do realize if it's one of them, we're going to have to kill them. Stella this won't Pat stand. She nods and if possible I boss is probably asleep, but I would like to talk with you. What I think might be I don't think Joe were, but I'm not for certain. Vague as mm. fuck out of the character. Vague George as fuck. You just stand over there and watch what's going on. Chris will come walk to you. You have something to tell me? Well, the entire... Something... Speak up, down initiate. There. Something down there was able to possess people. I don't know if it can go through floors or some bullshit like that, but that's probably what happened. Did you defile... Or anger a spirit in a temple grounds? I didn't know such thing. I don't know who would, but there is a high probability that something did happen. Well, first thought would be ask the cleric about it, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, that's kind of MIA right now, I guess. Right? <laughs> MIA forever. <laughs> well, as long as she doesn't get up as an undead... I'm so glad Takumo died. <laughs> Why do you say that now? Nothing, shit, nothing. <laughs> I don't... I don't know what's going on. Honestly. I'm... So I'm... what do you know? That's As he all I do know. And points at you. No, no, you said something happened down there, so you saw or know something. I... Again, we saw a spirit, and it has done... One spirit did some mental magic with us, and another one... I, but you said someone got possessed. Yes, we managed to take care of it. We thought we took care of it for good. Though, so, I guess not. If it's a ghost, it might get back up. I think they can do that. If it's spirit, there may be more than one. And we don't have a way of getting answers. No, we don't. That's, again, that's... And we have to secure this place for others to show up to basically a place that could cause them to go crazy and get possessed or get killed in their sleep. Eh, not, not exactly safe. Nope. It is not. What if the spirit decides to possess or attack someone while we're fighting the Horde of Undead and just decides to follow us and keep picking us off? Then we try to fight back with everything that we can so we can manage to whatever causing it. That's we're tough. a strong group. I believe in us. <laughs> this is this group of people more competent than my crew who I've spent almost all my life with. Does that mean you're pretty sure that's like the pot in the bucket? <laughs> I was gonna say, you almost pretty... sound like you were saying something smart, and then you went and tried to get mushy with it. Talk about how great these people are, even though all of them missed two people getting killed in their sleeps. This thing could have killed a lot more people. Well, it didn't. Yet. And who's to say someone isn't possessed right now? And you get stabbed by him. <laughs> Surprise! It was me all along. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know what will happen. But I think we can manage it. He after stabbed all, you. After Sorry. all, we are the Umbral Hoods. <laughs> they just both look at you. Right. She's just... Her confidence. Her confidence. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a listen check because they're right outside the fucking thing. Nat 20. Wasn't that 20, wasn't it? Yeah, you, 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 you hear the whole conversation. And George pretty much ends the conversation with, uh, with well, two of us are, at least. God, I can imagine them stabbing you and then just uttering the words, Hail Hydra. 
It's so kind of That's ridiculous. That's when you find out Sam was the greatest spy all along. <laughs> it's all just kind of... <laughs> I'm just kidding, it was Bill. Together. Bill's a super spy. Thanks. <laughs> Definitely one of the team. And then kind of pops off. Seven's just going to grumble to himself. Team? We signed up for a fucking guild of rogues! You say something, Seven? Just... <laughs> Sam's just Instead dealing with the stuff. Opening her mouth to the umbral hoods about a possible possession. Could that well, be what did it? To you, so, who did it? What do we have to watch out for? Because I'm not getting no. killed in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's reaction to Seventeen is like, could that have been what it was? That's what she thinks it is. Uh, I think it might be possession. I don't know. You're in a different spot than us. <laughs> I know. She's. Walter asked her question. Oh. Then I'll. To keep this from getting confuzzled. Yeah. I'll split it up. She's just. I don't know what's going on, and it scares me, and. We're on an island of undead with limited backup that may or may not be coming and limited supplies being led by questionable people with unknown danger. I would say how much worse it could get, but losing Iris is about as worse it could get. Uh, I don't know. Coming some sort of walking, shambling undead with your still mentality intact seems like it. A pretty good curse. Don't even joke about that. That is not funny as Walter just gets serious. Oh, it most definitely isn't. But that is a possibility. We're always talking about probabilities. You never know what is great. The idea of winding up dead on this island and becoming some undead trapped on it? No. Nope, nope, nope. Not me. I am going to survive. <laughs> That's what Takamu said. <laughs> she's just kind of like angles her hat and then just takes a swig of her flask and props up against the wall Nyx check uh, discord so uh, chowing down on Heather and looting the rest of the bodies Night will pass on with the last watch going to take over. If people are able to get back to sleep, that is. <laughs> with a full belly, I can. And morning will roll around. And that will probably be a decent stopping point because their next thing is literally you guys taking on the army since plans may need to be changed yeah you think <laughs> Nix I blame you for everything <laughs> I don't blame anyone it was a shitty role that's what it was no 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 she just heard god of the that she had to take the well, sword Worst case scenario, could have been Sam and Ash. Oh, if it was Sam, that would have broke Seven's mind. Oh, God. Uh, if it was Sam, there would have been three dead, because as soon as Seven realized what he'd done, he would have killed himself. <laughs> oh. If we're done, do you want me to hit the end button? We can stop here, yes. Okay. Pause. Just continue minor chat off stream. <laughs>